Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of our lives, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Good morning and welcome to Johnny's Bike. Tell them we are back. Tweet at them and hashtag. The hashtag is Johnny's Bite. Hashtag TV3 New Day. Hashtag TV3. Hashtag Johnny's Bite. Please share the information right now. It's important that we do. Now, I want to say a big thank you to the management of Media General for standing firm and for all the big people who called and texted. I don't take it for granted at all. While I was away and all the noise and the din that had come and all the kominis and everything else, how you stood by us. Thank you very much indeed. This morning, my first worry, and I'm sure it's the worry of many other people who this morning are watching Johnny's Bite on their way to work, are tweeting at us, hashtag Johnny's Bite, hashtag TV3 New Day, people who are sharing and liking and posting and commenting and all of that. You are worried about the price of data mobile data now why is it so expensive that's the question you have been asking and why is the regulator so quiet that's the next question so two things why is data so expensive you go to South Africa you go to Kenya you go here you go here and you compare the prices you're thinking that well, so why is our data so expensive mini work about home on our hey why is our data so expensive? You buy data, it's so expensive. Before you know it, shim, it's gone. Vanishing data and expensive data. Why is it so expensive? So I want to say good morning to our Minister for Communication, uh, Honorable Elslo Oso Kufo. I want to say good morning to you. Uh, uh, my guys at the N NCA as well. Good morning. I'm just saying good morning to you. I'm just greeting you this morning, asking you why data is so expensive. Perhaps you have answers we don't know. But if you have answers you have not given us, we want to know, we want to understand. Are you the cause of our woes that you are on the necks of the telcos and so they will also have to pass on the cost to us? Or is it the telcos that are squeezing us? Or is it us who are misusing data and crying wolf? Or is data generally expensive? Or could it be cheaper? These are the questions I want to ask this morning. Because everybody is talking about data. We're talking about digitalization. These days we talk about it. We have given teachers one teacher, one laptop. We expect them to use data. Are we providing them data, for example? I don't know. We expect children to use their tablets and all to assess education. And Madam Eslek Ouse Kufu, I know that at some point you even said that we're going to have one mobile for one person. That has not happened. It has not happened. One mobile phone, one person. It has not happened. The children were promised tablets. It has not happened. But we are talking digitalization. It means that we are moving towards a certain point. Now, if we are moving there, we will need data to be able to access uh, the internet self and, and research and learn and all of that. Schools are reopening. We're talking about Wi-Fi in schools, right? Whether it's a fiction of our imagination or a reality, I don't know. But we're talking about Wi-Fi in schools as well. The children are returning to school. Universities are up reopening. Data will be a mainstay, especially in this COVID era, COVIDly speaking. People will have to download stuff. People will send their assignments. People will have to research. People will have to do uh, Zoom meetings and Microsoft uh, Teams and all of that. But data, no need boil ding. So the question we're asking is, why is our data too expensive? Because we are not in normal times. If I'm a young entrepreneur who has been told that the government payroll is choked and I want to start a small business on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, I'm selling something, I want to uh, boost it and, and be liking and sharing and be commenting and, and connecting with people. When I get there, I will have to add the cost of expensive data to my overheads. Now, how much am I making? So why is data too expensive? That's a simple question we're asking. And we are throwing this on the lap of the Minister for Communication this morning. So if you are close by, please call the Minister for Communication and tell her that we are asking questions. Ghanaians are wondering why our data is too expensive. Will it ever get cheaper? 
talk about fiber optics, we talk this, we talk that, we talk bandwidth, we talk, we, we talk all the nice English. But the bottom line is that the end product, which is our data, is too expensive. So it's a simple question we have asked this morning, and we hope that we get answers this morning. But Oliver, take me to Kolebu, show me the picture of that surgical block. Painful. Painful. So hurtful and painful to the eyes. It meets your eyes and your heart and the tears and thoughts that follow each time you visit that facility. This facility. This facility. Kolebu Teaching Hospital. Don't show my face. Show the facility. Let it sink in. This fa no, no, don't zoom, don't zoom in. Yes, let it show so that they, we can see what is happening. You visit the Kolebu Surgical Ward, visiting hours, morning, 7 a.m. to 8 a.m., evening. Look at it. This is what we call a surgical ward in a tertiary hospital, a foremost tertiary hospital, Kolebu Teaching Hospital. It is indescribable. And the knowledge that this is supposed to be a place where people with serious medical conditions come with full hope to get care is in such a bad shape. It speaks a lot about us. It speaks a lot about us. It tells, it tells too many stories about us. Show the other picture, please. It, 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 it shows too much about us. It says too much about us. Nets of the words have gaping holes, some even are torn, the metal rods are hanging out, Jesus Christ. The signpost, even the signpost has problems, it's faded. This one, my camera made it nicer. Now, question is, how old is the structure? How old is this particular structure at the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. Uh, in 1923, Sir Gordon Gorgisbeck set up the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. We brag about it. Oh, it's our foremost hospital. Da 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 This is our surgical ward. Now, people come here. If you ever have to have a surgery that must be performed on you, this is where it's going to happen at Kolebu. This building. So even before you walk in there with your problems, when you see the building, you, be, you begin getting traumatized. You begin getting traumatized. Is this where my salvation is? You keep asking. Callable teaching hospital. This is it. Show the picture, please. Show the picture. Let the people see the picture of a hospital, a, a tertiary hospital. This is a surgical block. Callable teaching hospital. Callable. Callable. And back in the day, they used to teach us in school, Kolebu, Kolebu, oh, you are done. This morning, I want us to see the shame, the shame and embarrassment we call surgical, surgical block at Kolebu. Look at it. Take a look at it. Look. Take a look at it. Look at it. Look at the windows. Look at Kolebu. This is our Kolebu. And for a building that's almost 50 years, what has been a maintenance and renovation uh, culture? What has been it? We have allowed the building to rot up to this point. The next time, it will become another La General Hospital. We will, we will break everything down before we start thinking of how to put up another one. What we have done to the people of La General Hospital, I hope it doesn't happen to Kolebu Surgical Block. There's a structure. It is dilapidating. We are watching. Everybody is making big speeches, photo opportunities, da 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 da. We just like that. Then we will come and break everything up. My information is that the president went to Kolebu, the maternity block, and promised them that we're going to get it, you know, upgraded, fixed, whatever it is. Up until now, when you go there, it's not good. It's not good at all. And we are staying on the health facilities because, you see, again, for those of you who would defend every kind of thing. Show the picture. Those of you who defend every kind of thing. Look at it. If your mother or your father or you yourself are supposed to be receiving medical care in this, the people who send you to come and defend and insult everybody, they would have taken a plane and flown out to go and get medical care. Now tell me which hospital they will go to in the UK or US 
or China or India or Russia or wherever it is. Eh? Wherever it is. That will have such an embarrassing, a, a disrespectful, a disgraceful edifice as a surgical block. The shame, the shame that comes along with it. And I'm not making this up. It is there in living color. A danger to mankind. If you go to Kolebu this morning, what I'm describing to you, you'll see. I'm not making it up. Go to Kolebu this morning, I dare you. Take your phone to Kolebu this morning. Go to Kolebu and look for the surgical block. It's a very popular, tall, dirty, uh, unkempt building. Go to Kolebu this morning. It is a scar on our conscience. And I've been there several times. It's a, it's a scar on our conscience. You send a relative there for care, and your beloved is at the mercy of the conditions worse than her own bed at home. There are holes in the net, mosquito problems, uh, iron rods are hanging out there. The nurses and doctors there, I know, the health workers, they are giving off their best. But sometimes when you look them in the faces, and in their eyes, you can clearly tell that they are working conditions. And this is part of their working conditions. They work in a danger zone. Where they work is part of their working conditions. People only assume that, oh, working condition is about money that is given to you, allowances and salaries, and they give you small transport. And No, working conditions also includes where you go to work. Where you go to ease yourself when you go to work. Where you pee. Sorry, and where you poo when you go to work. It's all part of working conditions. So now how will that impact their efficiency? They want to work. And for our foremost tertiary healthcare facility, this is a big no-no. Show the picture again. Kolebu, surgical ward. Kolebu. The surgical block of Kolebu. This is it's heartbreaking. Kolebu, surgical block. Heartbreaking. It's, it's, so, it's so sad. Now, question I want to ask is this. You know that on the sixth floor, on the sixth floor of Kolibu, that surgical block, it's supposed to be the private ward, if you like, the VIP ward. In fact, this, this building also has a VIP ward, the irony of it. How ridiculous that this building, this building, the way it looks like right now, all of this, this thing. I nearly used a, a, a piece of French. How it looks like now, this one, has a VIP ward. It's on the sixth floor, I'm told. Now, is it true that about two or three months ago, a chip of cement block fell from the top, hit a lady on the head. A lady was attending to a patient on the sixth floor. She bled profusely, had to be rushed to the theater. Is it true? And that, then that, there's a cover-up going on somewhere. Is it true? That two, three months ago, a chip of the block fell and hit the head of uh, somebody who had come to see a patient to take care of them on the sixth floor, which is a private ward. She bled profusely and she was rushed to the theater. Is it true? How many more of those have happened on our blind side? We can do better. This one. We can do better. Good morning to you, Mr. Health Minister. I want to greet you. Good morning to you, CEO of Kolibu. I want to greet you. I'm just saying good morning to you. We can do better. This is a scar on our conscience. This does not befit us in any way. And when we are told that, oh, our healthcare system, our healthcare delivery, blah, 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 this is our, our scorecard at Kolibu. So now, if this is happening at Kolibu, you can then mirror the situation where it's happening, where else is happening. This is our Kolibu, our main line. I mean, when all fails, from Ifyan Kwanta to a whole government hospital, from uh, Konfanoch, when everything fails, they bring you down to Kolibu because that's the powerhouse. That's the headquarters. That's the main point. Oga Kwata Kwata, that's the last one. This is our surgical block. Show the, show the surgical block. Don't show my face. Show the surgical block. Let them feel it. This morning, they will wear, uh, they will take their bath, take their breakfast, eat, wear suit and tie, and go there. This is it. This is what it looks like. This is what it looks like. And look at it. This, this is faded. It is faded. The signpost is faded. See, 
This is it. And we say we want to do medical tourism. How do you propose to do medical tourism like this? How? How do you propose to do medical tourism like this? With this, this, this is Kolibu. So this morning, touch with you. Somebody has, has hurt himself and, and wants to get there to get some surgery done. This is where they are taking the person. Unbelievable. Now, as if that is not enough, the Ghana Association of Certified Registered Anesthetists, they had written on the 16th of November 2021 to the chairman of the National Labor Commission, Accra. Now, the chairman of the National Labor Commission yesterday told Alfredo Kansi that government needs to up their game so that the agitations and the pressure that comes onto them will stop. It means that somebody or some people are not paying attention, and I'll demonstrate it to you in a bit. Now, it says, since 2013, a petition and a wake-up call to avert an imminent industrial action. Since 2013, upon coming into force of the Health Professionals Regulatory Bodies Act 2013, Act 857, Section 50, interpretation, certified registered anesthetist means a practitioner under the part other than the anesthetist who administered anesthesia. For the avoidance of doubt, we are attaching all relevant letters and documents, including the ruling of the National Labor Commission, to confirm the concerns we are raising in this letter. An MOU entered into between the parties on the above subject matter, which was chaired by Dr. Anthony Insiasari, who was then the Director General of the Ghana Health Service, who is now the presidential advisor on health. He advises the president on everything health. The then director general is currently the advisor of the uh, blah, blah, blah. That's a spend. Unfortunately, appears the acting register of the Medical and Dental Council in connivance with the doctors, uh, doctor anesthetist has been seeking to introduce a scope of practice among others, which would diminish the value placed on the certified registered anesthetist who for many years have contributed without any form of supervision to legitimately perform their duties as certified registered anesthetists properly recognized by Section 50 of our 8857. We are mindful of the suffering of our cherished patients clients are likely to go through should we be forced by circumstances beyond our control to respond by taking an industrial action to safeguard our interest. It is important to state that we shall suffer an irreparable diminution in the terms of and the terms and condition of employment should the acting registrar and his cohorts be allowed to carry out the illegality they are trying to impose on us. We are unsure that we the certified uh, registered anesthetists will have the patience to give any form of notice before taking swift action to protect our interests. However, that it may be understood. This is the first one. Now, we therefore seek the intervention of the NLC quickly to deny and spare the nation the agony of an industrial action, especially as we enter the month of December. They wrote this in November. See the distribution list. Now, the Minister for Health was copied. The Attorney General, Minister for Justice, was copied. Minister for Employment and Labor Relations was copied. Deputy uh, AG was copied. Chief Executive Officer, Gami and Gami, they are consultants. Um, and the Chairman, Parliamentary Committee on Health, uh, Ranking Member Health, all of them, Executive Secretary, NLC, uh, and the Labor Commission itself, Minister of Health, uh, Chief Director, all of those people were copied, including the, the Dr. Anthony Sassari, who's been mentioned in the letter. Now, we sat down. And then even the chief director at the uh, Ministry of Health also wrote, also wrote, Oliver, find that, fetch that letter for me, what I, I, I gave to you yesterday. Now, even him was also cautioned that we need to do something. This was written in November. Then on the 1st of December, 2021, he also cautioned that we need to do something before these guys go on their strike. Now, this is it. Ministry of Employment and Labor Relations, 1st December 2021. Petition and a wake-up call to avert an imminent industrial action. Reference is made to your letter dated 16 November 2021 received from the Ghana Association of Certified Registered Anesthetists on the above subject. Copy attached. Two, we would be grateful if you could take steps to address the issue raised by the association to avert any industrial action on the labor front. Weissman Kizito, he had warned. Nobody listened. We would also appreciate it if you could update your colleague, Minister for Employment and Labor Relations, on action taken for his guidance. Now, there's the Honorable Minister for Health in the copy. There's also Minister for Labor Relations, Chief Director, Minister of Health, uh, Chief Labor Officer, President of the Association. Now, this was written on the 1st of December 2021. We didn't listen to them. One month on, the guys go on leave. Uh, they go on their strike. Now, what does this mean? This means that possibility of you getting surgery done for you is very low or even absent. 
So perhaps if you got yourself knocked down by a vehicle, or whatever it is, and, and this matter is not about finance. Come back to the studio. This matter is not about finance. It's not about money. It's not about cash. This one is about certificates and licenses. It's not about money. It's not like a Tewu's issue or Guta's issue uh, and uh, um, Utah's issue. Tewu or Utah or whatever it is. It's not about that. They are only asking about their licenses and even that has become a problem. Common licenses has become a problem. They hinted in November. The chief director reminded us in December, we have waited, we are in January of a new year, and we have started. Mr. President, this doesn't look good. Health Minister, this doesn't look good. Please, enough. Good morning. Alhamdulillah.